State Representative Brandon McGee, thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. Let's jump right into it. So the Department of Housing released more than $700,000 in rapid rehousing funds to create permanent housing options for the state's homeless population. What are some of those options right now and for what certain populations? You know, $735,000 is not a lot of money, but it's definitely enough to get the resources needed to respond to the most vulnerable in the state. Uh, some of those options are really basic and simple. Identifying existing housing options, whether it's a one, two bedroom in the state of Connecticut uh, that would provide these in individuals with uh, some stable housing. Um, the challenge though is really identifying who gets what and when, uh, because we have thousands of individuals uh, that are uh, literally homeless. Uh, but I do know that the department is working with those individuals who are 60 and over, uh, because those uh, that is uh, the population, unfortunately, that has had a difficult time rebounding from uh, the COVID uh, virus. So uh, a lot of supports have been put in place around that. If someone watching at home knows someone who is homeless and wants to help that person during this time, what's best for them to do? I know the first uh, sort of instinct and the response of a good person is to say, you know what, come stay with me. We have extra space. Come in our, come in our home. We got you. One of the things that, and this is just from me, and I'm not an expert. I'm just a lowly old politician trying to communicate some information, but I wouldn't recommend individual residents offering space to uh, homeless individuals, if you would. Uh, but if you have to, you got to do what you have to do. I would recommend that uh, the individual call 211. They will then assess uh, that individual who will then be referred over to the coordinated access network, and they would provide them with uh, whatever needs that they might have. How does a person experiencing homelessness who has COVID-19 symptoms self-quarantine in a homeless shelter? You know, that, that's something that my colleagues and I, as well as the commissioner and the administration have been talking through. Uh, we realize that many of the shelters are to capacity already, right? And so with this uh, mandate and regulation of social distancing, it's really hard to now say to shelters, hey, your beds have to be six to eight feet you know, apart in order for us to honor and stop the spread of COVID-19. So there's a challenge. And, and what I've done in my district alone is worked alongside many of our faith leaders who expressed interest. Hey, we have a church. It's shut down. Uh, there's space. We would love to provide the support needed to housing our most vulnerable people, our homeless individuals. Well, Brandon, once again, thank you for being with us tonight. And remember, if you or someone you know is dealing with a housing emergency, make sure to dial 211 for more information. Let's send things back to you guys.